I'm going to bet that you didn't see many scary social media posts today. That's because there were none to post. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. We're going to talk about Invest 91L in the future of that system. We're also checking on Hawaii as Hurricane Kiko is still out there. I'd love to know your thoughts on all this. You know the drill. Post in the comments what you think about 91L or Kiko if you've been watching that. This is it, guys. Find out where it is. That's the game that I want to play with you guys tonight. It's not this little surge of green moisture right there. That's the water vapor imagery showing some thunderstorms. It's not the one behind it. Here it is right here. That little flare-up of green. That's Invest 91L. We showed you the water vapor imagery. We showed you the drier air out ahead of it last night. We talked about it was going to have some issues. And now development chances are being dropped significantly altogether not only by models, but by the National Hurricane Center. So here we go. There's all the orange out there. So it will have a small window. This still could become a tropical depression over the weekend, but there's a ton of dry air that it is going to have to do battle with. And then once it gets towards the Northeast Caribbean, we'll go over the environment through the course of this video. It's going to encounter some wind shear. So I want to show you the official number as of 8 o'clock, the official outlook. This is what the Hurricane Center has now dropped it to. Remember yesterday at this time, there was a 90% shot over the next seven days. Now it's 60. And the two-day window is closing quickly. Now a 30% shot. Again, I won't beat the horse too dead tonight. I did that in yesterday's video. You can go back and watch it. I'll put that at the end. But again, the doom and gloom scenarios, 10 plus day at, days out, not only for the track, but also for intensity, garbage. And that's why we're here on this channel, the Garbage Crew. I love you guys. We pointed this out. And... uh Again, trying to seek the science and meteorology behind just looking at the rogue model runs that may point uh, put a doom and gloom scenario overhead. Okay, so now we're science and meteorology the whole way. So the tropical index I have overlaid with uh, the computer models. And by the way, the computer models are also misleading because they can look scary, but they don't show anything about the intensity. So I'm going to show these lines coming to the Caribbean. But remember, this is likely going to be something pretty weak. So the red means that the conditions are favorable. The green means that the conditions are not that favorable. Same with yellow. And as we take this further out in time, you see it is a little bit in red. This takes in wind, into account wind shear, moisture, things like that. So the wind shear kind of low in this area. But notice how close it is to the green areas. There's, that, there's a big trough dip in the jet stream there that is going to induce some wind shear on it. And then you'll see as we move into next week, a uh, big patch of that yellow and green around, more yellow towards uh, the Dominican Republic and Haiti. Uh, some red up here, we talked about this at length to the instability or lack thereof, uh, increases a little bit as you get towards the Bahamas southeast corner, very close to where Aaron was, and it took advantage of that. Again, once if this is anything in the Eastern Caribbean, we typically call the Eastern Caribbean the tropical graveyard. That is where conditions are, climatologically speaking, not the most favorable. So I want to show you kind of another rendition here. This is the ensembles. And I always preach again, ensembles are the way to go. I showed these in the last video as well. And it showed that a lot of the ensemble members were not online. The Google AI killed the thing before uh, the Google AI ensembles killed the, the, the system before it got to the Caribbean and everything else kind of kept it out at sea. So ensembles are the best thing to look at. I show those a lot on this channel. Um, if you like that stuff, if you like the science of meteorology and you like the no BS, you come to the right place, uh, consider hitting that subscribe button. So I want to show you a couple of things before we go forward. And again, this is why you didn't see any scary model runs today because they all went away. I think every single model now has now dropped out development or at least significant development. And that's why the Hurricane Center is dropping their percentages as well. So this is the European. We're looking down, down in this area where the crosshairs are. That's it. That's it. And maybe, maybe something as it rounds the area of high pressure. Maybe. GFS, remember, it had a hurricane into Florida. It had a hurricane into South Carolina. Nothing. That's why it's critically important to find a great source. I hope to be that source for those seeking credible weather information. Um, 
but holy cow, this one was really bad. Now, I'm going to keep on watching it, of course. Never take your eye off the ball here. Um, but the conditions that it's going to be going into are going to be working against it, of course. We'll dissect everything as it comes, but I just want to put that out there for anybody. I know there were a lot of people that messaged, okay, do I need a plan? Just kind of watch. That's what we're doing here, but again, things are much, much better. Now, in the Pacific, we have Hurricane Kiko, and it is a bite-sized hurricane, but it is a powerful one. Look at that eye. It looks very pretty on satellite. Now, the good thing is it should weaken significantly on approach to Hawaii. So we're still talking about a Category 4 monster out there. The good news is, again, it's not hitting anything as we speak as it continues to go to the west. Forecast cone from the Hurricane Center has this drifting north. Again, I don't like that we have Maui and the western islands still in the cone here, but I, I want to continue to watch that drift further to the north because, again, we know it the terrain we don't want any kind of rainfall but the good news is from a wind perspective that is going to weaken considerably from its category four status at this time so some more better news anyway on to the severe weather risk for tomorrow to start your weekend the best opportunity for some nasty thunderstorms from coastal maine down toward philly that includes new york city uh, northern new jersey we're going to watch that that is the cold front that is going to slice through and if you are watching maybe from minnesota or michigan or illinois that's the front that delivered fall and going to continue to reinforce that cooler air wide view here of our future clouds and rain to get you into the weekend there's nine o'clock on your saturday morning hope everybody has a great weekend there is that nasty line of thunderstorms so let me take you right to the eastern seaboard this is at three o'clock and i mean that is pretty ugly uh, from Portland. So again, have a way to get some warnings tomorrow. If you have plans outside, it's going to be nasty. Uh, Portland to Manchester to Boston, Waterbury, Bridgeport, New York, Philly, uh, maybe even extending into Baltimore, Central Virginia through Roanoke. Just keep an eye on that tomorrow uh, that we could have some pretty nasty stuff. Let me take this out into the future. Some more scattered thunderstorms southwest of San Antonio through the front range of the Rockies. Uh, some monsoonal moisture as well trying to pop up. And we have just a few scattered showers underneath the upper low. I mean, cool fall showers underneath the upper low portion of the system delivering fall. And you see that pinwheeling around the upper low through the UP of Michigan into northern Michigan. And there are some of the extra thunderstorm activity. There is the thunderstorm activity in New Mexico, parts of Arizona, and then into Colorado. So be on the lookout for that. As they move into Saturday, into early Sunday morning, we'll try to clear things back out as that front slides through. There's your forecast for Saturday. If you love fall, holy cow, 62 in Minneapolis, 57 in International Falls. Marquette, what's up? 58, 73 in Nashville. Still hot in the desert southwest, still hot in the south and southeast. Uh, that 84 in Portland, that's going to get much cooler getting into Sunday. All righty, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to keep a close eye over the weekend on 91L to make sure there's no shenanigans. Again, it's not impossible this thing develops. So if it does get a uh, depression, if it does form into one or a tropical storm, we're still okay. Because again, it's so far out, it has a lot working against it. And that was the point of this video. Remember yesterday, we went over the scenarios and we said that we showed you that conditions weren't all that favorable. And we certainly talked about that this was not a slam dunk to come in to the United States anyway. That's why you don't focus on those singular model runs. Ensembles are the way to go in this stage of the game. So always keep that in mind going forward. A lot of hurricane season left. I'm hoping it stays as quiet as it's been, relatively speaking. Uh, that's a story for another time. But again, you don't see the weak model runs on most channels on most social media platforms. I just showed you that. Have a great weekend, guys. We'll catch you soon.